It's time to get your news on. We are VK1 WIA. Hey, you got it in one. It is the national news from the WIA for week commencing March 17, 2024. And this week, WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3GK. ACMA to search for QRM in Batesman Bay area. Dennis, VK4AE, contest manager for the John Moyle Field Day. And congratulations due to VK5DG, now in the top 50. But wait, there's much more, much, much more in this edition of news from the Wireless Institute of Australia. I'm Editor Graham, VK4BB. Who listens to radio? I'm Alec, VK2MV in Sydney. I'm Kieran, VK3BTV. I'm Peter, VK3BFG. Bernie, VK4KX. This is Ben, VK4YT from Tablelands Radio and Electronics Club. It's Catherine, VK7GH. That's all. This is WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3GK. Are you planning on attending the 2024 WIA AGM and Conference in Bundaberg on the weekend of the 3rd, 4th and 5th of May? If so, keep a lookout for the Bundaberg Radio Club's promotion in AR Magazine next month as it details what's on and where. It will be a long weekend in VK4, so plan and book your accommodation soon. Registrations and AGM booking links should be on the WIA website shortly. Last weekend was the Beru Contest. The WIA board thank all amateurs that participated and a special thanks to the two VK teams of operators and also the WIA members that took up the opportunity and operated a headquarters station using the WIA prefix. We had operators from VK2 to VK7. No VK1 or 8 this year. Let's try for a clean sweep in 2025. It's nearly a month ago that the class licence was introduced. All is well and we press on with minimal impact to operating on air. Meanwhile in the background, ACMA continues to update and hone the assessor facilities for providing free amateur examinations utilising the volunteer assessor network. For more reports, the ACMA's assessor portal is functioning very, very well and once a call sign is applied for, it is generally issued within a few days. Were you previously a WIA assessor? Have you considered returning to rejoin the assessor cohort? ACMA are accepting applications for new and previously qualified assessors to join with the current ACMA assessor group. Of course, there are some simple criteria that you need to meet just like when the WIA conducted the exam, so nothing new there. Apply via email to arassessors at acma.gov.au. If you are an assessor and on Facebook, Mark Hillman, VK3OHM, has set up an assessor group for discussions and general help. You can find it by searching Facebook for ACMA Assessors. The WA, through its working groups and board, continue to engage with ACMA on a regular basis. The relationship is robust as discussions continue on topics such as high-power permits, operational improvements and other matters. If you have topics or issues you would like tabled to ACMA, please email the WA office for its consideration. Keep in mind that the WA affiliated clubs will need to consider insurance renewals by April the 1st with the insurance broker's Gibbs insurer. We expect they will be issuing renewals soon, if not already, to our respective clubs. That's all for this week. For now, 7-3 from Lee, VK3GK. Thanks, Lee. Now, some further news dealing with ACMA. Peter, VK2AN, has lodged a complaint with ACMA about interference affecting the whole of the Batemans Bay area. It sounds, he says, like distorted 50 hertz harmonics and affects frequencies from 100 kilohertz to over 4 megs. ACMA replied saying, and I quote, an ACMA field officer will contact you and if you have a further query, please contact our service centre. So if anyone else has a problem with QRM, be like Peter and contact ACMA. We are VK1 WIA. Now, international news with VK2 LAW Jason. Yes, it certainly is. And international news is with thanks to IARU, RSGB, RAC, 
A-R-R-L-N-Z-A-R-T, E-HAM, Amateur Radio Newsline, ICQ Podcast, RadioWorld.com, Hackaday and the worldwide sources of the WIA. Leading this week's international news, IARUMS Wiki, an IARU monitoring system wiki has been published to assist users in recognising and identifying the most usual modes used by non-amateur radio stations in the HF amateur radio bands. It contains a discrete technical description for each mode as well as audio recordings, waterfall screenshots and video captures of transmissions. This wiki will be updated as new signals are received and processed and as better screenshots, audio, video recordings of them are received. The IARU MS Wiki can be directly accessed via the link in this week's WIA National News Service. April 18. Every year on April 18, radio amateurs worldwide take to the airwaves in celebration of amateur radio and to commemorate the formation of the International Amateur Radio Union, IARU, on April 18, 1925. The IARU has announced that the theme for this year's World Amateur Radio Day will be a centenary of connections. Celebrating 100 years of amateur radio innovation, community and advocacy. No doubt Felix will soon start letting us know of world special event stations during forthcoming operational news segments here on WIA National News. Starlink in Ukraine. Starlink receivers need positioning and precise timing information to function and currently the best way to get that information is the use of global navigation satellite systems such as GPS. Unfortunately, the antenna used for this secondary satellite connection leaves something to be desired. Of course, when it comes to solving Starlink problems, there's no one better than Oleg Kutkov, whose duty it is to fix and improve upon Starlink terminals used in Ukraine. And when the specific problem is GPS bands getting jammed by the invading military, you better believe that a fix is due. Oleg sets the scene, walking us through the evolution of GPS circuitry on the Starlink terminals. Then he shows us the simplest mods you can do, like soldering an improved passive antenna in place of the chip antenna currently being used. According to the blog from Oleg, what he's come up with, well, differences are impressive. Starlink terminals with active antenna mods were able to get GPS signal in areas with active jamming going on, while the unmodified ones could not. Hopefully his blog is still available, as it's a must-read for anyone wondering about GPS antenna reception problems in customer-accessible devices. This is not the only Starlink hardware mod Hackaday have seen Oleg make. They recently covered his Starlink Ethernet port restoration journey that meticulously fixes Ethernet connectivity oversights in the newer models. And the blog also has an article about powering Starlink terminals without the need for PoE. To news from Israel. Need to recharge your batteries? AR Newsline have reported on a company in Israel doing just that. It seems technology developed 10 years ago in Israel to permit wireless transfer of power has begun showing up in some world markets. The over the air system uses infrared sent from transmitters to transform electricity into infrared beams, which they then send to nearby devices that need their batteries recharged. Line of sight is necessary for the transmission to be successful, and one transmitter's signal can cover about 130 square metres of area. For it to work, each device needs to have receivers attached to convert the infrared signals back to electricity. The company, Ycharge, has trademarked this far-field wireless technology under the name Aircord. It's designed to replace the traditional need to plug devices in using cords to recharge them. According to the company website, the technology is already in use in some countries in the retail, commercial and industrial sectors. Ycharge states that Aircord sends narrow beams that focus only on the devices equipped with receivers and has been certified as safe by the Food and Drug Administration and underwriters' laboratories in the US, and by the International Electrotechnical Commission in the UK. Finally, if you're planning to visit us down under here in Australia anytime soon and want to get on the air, 
Listen up. Whether you're a US technician class operator, a foundation license holder in the UK, or a ham with entry-level privileges in certain other countries, the new class license arrangements here in Australia now permit you to get on the air, up to a maximum of 365 consecutive days. Visitors from a list of countries no longer need to make a separate application for a license. They need only a penned VK slash before their home call sign. The ACMA has posted a list of countries with currently recognised foreign licence equivalents that may operate under Australian licence conditions. Visit the ACMA webpage at the address given in the text version of this week's news. The ACMA makes it clear, however, that hams seeking to relocate permanently to Australia still need to apply for a licence in VK and receive a new VK home call. Speaking of home calls... I'm VK2LAW, reporting from the International News Desk here in Sydney. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1WIA. Now, operational news with Felix, VK4FUQ. Hello there. Now, Contest Wires 2024. Africa All Mode International DX Contest on now. 1200 hours UTC on Saturday 16 March to 1200 hours UTC on Sunday 17 March. Also on now, well, let Dennis VK4 AE Contest Manager for the John Moore Field Day tell us. As this news goes to air, the contest is nearing completion and many stations will still be active. I wish them well in the remainder of the contest. Logs have been arriving steadily. It does not seem to be as many as the number received at this point of the contest last year. It's highly recommended that once you have submitted your log, you should check a bit later that your call sign has been added to the list of logs received. If your call is not on the list, then it might not have been received. A couple of logs have been submitted as a PDF, which is just a picture and contains no more useful information to the contest than a picture of the flower, as the data is not accessible electronically and hence unusable to me. In the same way, a couple of logs were submitted in N1MM format, which does not contain all the information required for the John Moyle Field Day UHF rules and requires much extra work by the contest manager to attempt to fix those logs. It's timely to remind you that there's not a lot of time left to submit your log, and this time will pass quickly. The final date is the 7th of April, 2024. This is required by the very long lead times now for the AR magazine. Following this date, all of the logs will be processed and the results prepared and made available soon after. The results will be shown on the WIA contest page as soon as they are ready. So check that your call is on the list and resend the log if it isn't. It might also be a good idea to submit your log now as you never know what can happen or delay you in the next few days. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Now to the next Yota contest. Organised by the IAA Region 1 Youth Working Group in cooperation with the Hungarian Amateur Radio Society, the aim of the Yota Contest is to increase youngsters' activity on the air, strengthen the reputation of the Yota program, and demonstrate support for youngsters across the world in all regions. The next two sessions of this year's Yota Contest will be from 1000 hours to 2159 hours UTC on 21 July and 29 December on the five classic bands CW and SSB. Everyone can work everyone. IAA had your World Championship the second full weekend of July, that is 13-14. Trans-Tasman Low Band Contest, July 21. The Trans-Tasman Contest, always held on the third weekend in July, aims to encourage low band activity between VK and ZL. Not so much a contest, but you could claim a certificate. Radio Amateurs of Canada is once again holding a Get on the Air on World Amateur Radio Day special event in which encouraged as many amateurs as possible to get on the air and contact as many RAC stations as possible. 
ROC official stations will operate across Canada from 0000 hours Zulu to 2359 hours Zulu on April 18. The ROC official station call signs, and there are some 14, and all end with the suffix ROC. Those contacting one or more of these stations will be eligible for a special commemorative certificate. Noting their participation in ROC's Get On The Air On World Amateur Radio Day event, Participants need simply to complete one or more contacts on any band and mode with RAC official stations to earn their certificates. No logs need to be submitted. Simply check back on the RAC website when instructed and enter your call sign to download your certificate. August 17-18 Remembrance Day Contest 44th Alaric Contest in this Alaric Contest is always held on the last four weekend of August. Starts Saturday 25th of August at 0600 hours UTC. Ends Sunday 26th of August at 0559 hours UTC. Year to Contest. Youth on the Air Contest 3 of 3 will be from 10 hours to 2159 hours UTC on 29 December on the 5 classic bands CW and SSB. DX Window to the World. Active is 5R8 IC from St. Marie Island, AF090, until the 31st of March, mainly using CW on the 40 to 10 metre bands and via the QO100 satellite. QSL station 5R8 IC via Logbook of the World or via home call F6 ICX. Wireless station 4S7 KKG from Sri Lanka is working until the 30th of March. FT8 FT4, Ritty and sometimes CW on the 20 to 6 metre bands. QSL 407 KKG via Logbook of the World, Club Logs OQRS, or to home call DC0KK. In the world of DX, we're listening for members of the Zurich City Police Radio Amateur Club throughout the year, operating as HB20SP. The club is marking its 20th anniversary. Unfortunately, no Bureau of QSLs, but you can use the Logbook of the World. In HP20, SP runs until December 31. Listen throughout the year for the special call sign 9A100RKZ, marking the 100th anniversary of the Radio Club Zagreb, which was founded the 24th of March 1924 in Croatia. QSL via 9A1 ADE. For BK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FUQ in Ingham. From here, there and everywhere, you've tuned to the Wireless Institute of Australia's National News Service. We are VK1WIA. Now, special interest group news with Cole, VK3GTV. And top of the morning to you on this St. Patrick's Day. First up in the segment, it's Final Frontier. And congratulations to David, VK5DG, who's in the top 50 rovers in the Grid Master Map rankings, mixed Leo Mio Geo in satellite operations, as determined by the Grid Master Map on X, formerly Twitter. The ranking is determined by the number of grids and DXCC entities activated, taking into account only those grids where a minimum number of QSOs logged on the Gridmaster FR website have been validated by a third party. NASA has identified a growing air leak on the International Space Station located at the end of the Russian service module. The leak, situated in Russia's Zvezda service module, initially released one pound of air per day, but accelerated to over two pounds daily in early February. Despite the increased rate, NASA assures that it does not currently jeopardise the safety of the ISS crew or impact the station's operations. Collaboration between the United States, Russia, Europe, Japan and Canada is underway to address the situation. Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, confirms ongoing monitoring and asserts that there is no immediate threat to the crew or the station itself. The leak is in a three-foot long area and has prompted precautionary measures including sealing off the affected vestibule to mitigate further air loss from the rest of the space station. Has Voyager 1 gone dark? The 46-year-old probe, which flew by Jupiter and Saturn in its youth, 
had inspired we mere earthlings with images of the planet as a pale blue dot hasn't seen usable data from interstellar space in months. When Voyager 1 launched in 1977, scientists hoped that it could do what it was built to do and take up-close images of Jupiter and Saturn. It did that, and much more. Voyager 1 discovered active volcanoes, moons and planetary rings, proving along the way that Earth and all of humanity could be squished into a single pixel in a photograph, a pale blue dot, as the astronomer Carl Sagan called it. It stretched a four-year mission into the present day, embarking on the deepest journey ever into space. Now it may have bid its final farewell to that faraway dot. Voyager 1, the farthest man-made object in space, hasn't sent coherent data to Earth since November last year. NASA has been trying to diagnose what the Voyager missions project manager, Suzanne Dodd, called the most serious issue the robotic probe has faced. Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA. Oceans separate us, but because of one amateur radio program, oceans have also been uniting us. Sixty years ago, the first amateur radio islands on the air operators began calling CQ from remote ocean islands around the globe. That spirit of adventure is being celebrated this summer at Europe's largest amateur radio event. Ham Radio Friedrichshafen has chosen IOTA's 60th anniversary as the theme for its 47th amateur radio event, taking place on June 28th to the 30th in southern Germany. In the words of the promoters, it's a celebration of 60 years of islands on the air. Technology meets adventure. Noir Moutier Island, IOTA number EU064, TM4J. F4DXV Jerome and EA4NF Philippe announced that they'll be activating Noir Moutier Island from April 1 to 4 with the special call sign TM4J. This international de-expedition is the first 100% satellite from this French island, EU064. Worldwide Special Interest Group's military. And in this segment, a military retreat, retreating back to the 60s and Vietnam. But today, radio vets look to honour Chris Knoll with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Chris Knoll's voice on the radio not only brought hope to troops serving in Vietnam, but her nightly program titled A Date with Chris also served as testament to the strength of AM during times of crisis. Now three radio professionals moved by her story have launched a petition with hopes of honouring Knoll with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. One soldier moved by her broadcast was Harry Simons, who, after enlisting in the Marine Corps, was ultimately stationed in late 1967 in Saigon, Vietnam, where he became the chief engineer of AFVN Saigon AM and FM facilities, as well as being the network's nighttime rock and roll DJ. Harry said, Only after the experience did I realise how much influence AFVN had on particularly we Americans in Vietnam. AFVN could be heard via a 50 kilowatt non-directional antenna broadcasting on 5.40 a.m. from a transmitter near to the Aussie base at Vung Tau on the South China Sea. If you were a veteran and you served in Southeast Asia, you knew who Chris Knoll was, said Simons, adding she was the most famous broadcaster in the world at that time. The group was asking veterans and other interested parties to express support of Knoll's service through their petition. The petition will be sent to President Joe Biden to advocate that Noel will be considered for the Presidential Medal of Freedom for her selfless commitment and service to her country as a civilian in times of war and in times of peace. She became AFRTS's first female announcer of that era. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Radio Amateur Young Timers, Yota, Youngsters on the Air. And with the latest Yota news, it's over to Alec, VK2MV. Thank you, Cole. Dayton Ham Venture announces their Amateur of the Year award. Edward Engelman, KG8CX, is the co-founder of the Young Amateurs Communications Ham Team known as Yacht. Mr. Engelman's background as an elementary school educator and principal for 33 years was instrumental in developing the talents he now uses in his work with young amateurs. His major objective is to help create and develop enjoyment and skills in communication slash technology via ham radio activity. This is done through its many modes and helps encourage friendships with other youth hams. 
Yacht's call sign is K8KDZ. Membership has grown steadily. Many of these yacht youth have given presentations at past hamventions and hamcation youth forums conducted by Carol Perry. A number of the youth members have been awarded national recognition for their ham radio activity and accomplishments. Besides the development of youth presenters, Yacht has Echolink sessions six evenings a week and club activity encourages participation in all modes of amateur radio. Ed is proud to pay forward his interest in the future of amateur radio by developing the next generation of hams. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Alec, VK2MV in Sydney. Now back to you, Cole. Thanks, Alec. And that wraps up the segment for this week. Enjoy St. Patrick's Day and don't overdo the Guinness. We don't want you still being a bit green tomorrow. From me, Cole, VK3GTV, 73 and cheers. Across Australia, from VK1WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. In VK5, it can be heard on VK5 RSV 70 centimetres, VK5 RDF 70 centimetres, VK5 RSE 2 metres and VK5 RBV 70 centimetres on the digital C4FM Adelaide 10G YSX and YSF node 69159. I'm Nathan Grundy, VK5 DAD. 2024, it's a date and clubs are always welcome to email text with audio for this section and details of all WIA affiliated clubs and affiliated societies can be found on the WIA website, including email addresses and website links, wia.org.au. In VK4, Redcliffe and Districts, Redfest, April 6. Redfest 2024, a ham fest for the ladies in our lives. John Saunders, VK4BZ, President of the Redcliffe and Districts Radio Club, wants to promote the inclusion of women in amateur radio. The Redcliffe Club's annual Red Fest on Saturday the 6th of April 2024 at St Michael's College, Abbey Place, Caboolture. This year, he announces, the club is going out of their way to include our long-suffering spouses. The majority of operators in the hobby are male, so I'm talking about the ladies in our lives. And if you are one of the ladies already in the hobby, well then this is for you too, he announced. John went on to say, not only will Redfest have the usual tables of pre-loved radio goodies as well as commercial sellers with brand new bits and pieces this year, there will be three displays specifically for the ladies. The club will include one gift shop table, the second with handmade soaps, skin care and bath products, the third being a quilting stall, and of course the Australian Ladies Amateur Radio Association, ALARA, will also have a table at Redfest 2024. John enthusiastically mentioned the Speciality Cafe with tasty treats, coffee, good coffee, and a place to sit down and enjoy it. So John asked, fellas, invite the ladies in your life along. Lady Hams, now there's even more reason to come to Redfest. Check out the club website for more information at www.redcliffradioclub.org.au. Thanks, Robert. We'll get back to you in a tick for further, especially for our Q News listeners in VK4 and Northern VK2. May 4 to 5 in Bundaberg, it's the WIA AGM. Also that weekend in Bundaberg, Parkfest. It's also being held, that is Parkfest, in Dorigo in VK2. National Volunteer Week happens Monday the 20th to Sunday the 26th of May. The Australian Fox Hunting Championships in Mount Gambia, June 8 to 9. In VK4, the Gold Coast Ham Fest happens October 31. VK5, Amateur Radio Experimenters Group Radio and Electronic Sale, Saturday the 26th of October. VK7, Tasmanian Ham Conference, November 2 and 3 in Hobart. And Sparks Rosebud Radio Fest, November 17 at Rosebud VK3. Now, until next we do meet, I'm Graham VK4BB. Walk softly. This is VK1 WIA. All points of contacts from today's news stories are to be found in print when you read the web editions. www.wia.org.au This has been the Wireless Institute of Australia with the weekly news service. 
This broadcast is in text, audio and video and is accessed on wia.org.au. Courtesy of Bevan, VK5, BD's ATV and YouTube channel, this has been WIA National News. We're back now, live and local, and your voice, your callbacks. And don't forget, tick like.